What you're looking at is my very first car that I bought from Mubai Cars. That is an actual video of the day I bought it. And that is also an actual video of some of the problems I faced after buying it. Anyway, we'll get to that later. But first, I have other things to tell you. We'll talk about buying cars at auctions. We'll talk about where Janus is today. I'm sure you'd like to know. So after five months of requests, I have finally responded. And here it is the story of Vianos. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it helps you, especially those of you who want to buy used cars. So let us get started. Now you might be wondering, why did I buy Vianos in the first place? Well, let's be honest. No one dreams about buying a used old car. No one. You buy it because of the situation, the circumstance, or simply because the bank does not want to finance you or for some you just don't want to owe anything on any car, so you just buy what you can cash. Initially, this was my dream. This is the silver Ford Fiesta I told you about. This was December 2019. I wanted this car, but because I hadn't started working, the bank refused to finance me, obviously. Now, over the years, I had managed to save up some money and I had managed to raise about 60,000 Rand. So my plan was to use that as a deposit and then finance the car I really wanted, this Ford Fiesta. As you can see, it made me very happy. Young Mr. How much over there. But when the bank turned me down, so as you recall from my Ford Fiesta review, I was supposed to start work in February. So I had now decided I'll just wait for that time and then I'll use a dummy payslip to get my Ford Fiesta. You can even see with how I was driving that I was still learning how to drive. Yeah, I had to focus, you know, pay maximum attention. And by the way, uh, this video clips, this flashback video clips, uh, I didn't have an iPhone at the time, guys. I was using a Samsung J5, I think. So you'll see some of the videos are shaky, they're blurry, they're not clear. Yeah, I'm just making it work, guys. But you get the idea. This is more about the story than the video or the car. But yeah, after I test drove the Ford Fiesta, I immediately knew I wanted one. So I didn't get the silver Fiesta, as you know. Then I spoke to this other friend of mine. He told me, brah, you don't need to finance cars. Don't fall into the system. Buy a car cash, be free. I was like, all right, cool. So I spent the whole of December on Autotrader, on Cars.coza, just looking at cars I could possibly buy with my 60,000 Rand. One misconception people have is that cars are cheap. They think brand new cars are cheap. They think used cars are cheap. They think cheap cars are cheap. They are no cheap cars. Even on cars that have been driven. When I say driven, I'm talking about mileage that's over 200,000 kilometers. Where you see, okay, this car is on its last leg. You find it's also expensive. So that eventually led me to buy cars. So in January, I started going to buy cars branches looking for a car. I always made sure I called some of my friends who know a little bit more about cars than I did. And a lot of times we just left with nothing. They're like, hey, bruh, there's nothing here that won't give you problems down the road with your budget. My budget was small. 2020 cars were not as expensive as they are now, but still 60,000 wasn't all that much. And that's one thing you should keep in mind as well. At a certain price point, it's expected that the car you buy might have some issues and there are some things you'll have to fix on it. You won't just buy it and drive it and live happily ever after. It will need a little bit of love and attention. So on the 12th of January 2020, I called one of my good friends. He used to call himself Cheddar Boy at the time. So to keep him anonymous, we'll just call him Cheddar Boy. Cheddar Boy really came through for me. I called him, I told him, hey Cheddar Boy, I want a car to buy cars, please accompany me. He's like, cool. So we went, we looked around. There were a lot of cars that had potential, but some couldn't start. Some would took them on a drive and you could hear the noises or mm, something is wrong. Shocks. Yeah. Like I'm sure you heard it for yourself. If you didn't, you can rewind. But if you don't want to, the Corsa looked good, but on the test drive, it was making those sounds. So we left it. We checked out the Yaris. The Yaris also had its own issues. So we kept on looking until we eventually found the VW Polo. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my very first car, Janos. When we saw this Polo, me and Cheddar Boy agreed, this looked good. It looked clean, it looked well taken care of. Everything looked proper. And it only came in at 58,000 Rand, so it meant I have 2,000 Rand change, or so I thought. 
In terms of the interior, it was fairly decent to be honest compared to the other cars we had seen. The seats were nice and clean, it didn't have a radio, but I just lied to myself and said I'll buy a radio maybe next week. I never did. The electric windows were working, which was a good sign for me. The only other issues we picked up at the time was one of the doors didn't open. As you know, it was very common with old VWs to have a door that doesn't open for some reason. And then the boot also didn't open, but I just told myself I'll fix that. Within the week, it's okay. The lights looked good. I was impressed even before the test drive. The mileage on this car when we found it was 195,500 kilometers. And I have to say, VW did an excellent job. This is a 2009 model. So at the time, it was 11 years old and it was still going with that high mileage. Polo bourgeois. You know, today there's still a lot of them on the road and they just keep on moving. You just give it some basic maintenance, change a few things here and there and it will look after you. It really will. What you're looking at is my proof of payment or receipt. So after the test drive, I bought it. You'll notice it says 58,950 instead of just 58,000. That's because there is a documentation fee I didn't know about at the time. But it wasn't a problem. It meant I still had 1,050 rand change to play with. It came with zero petrol. Even on the test drive, it was on empty. So after we took the car, I had to go and pour 150 rand. A few minutes later, we decided to first pass by Cheddar Boy's place to celebrate the new car. As I was about to drive it home, we noticed the way it was parked, the wheels were skew. They were basically coming off. We didn't understand what was wrong. We jacked it. I, I can't remember which two wheels it was, but there were two. We took the wheel out, put it back. Still, it was not sitting properly. So we decided, Ori, ah, it's not safe for me to take the car home. So I had to leave it with Cheddar Boy for about a day or two. But he was a cool guy. He was kind enough to give me one of his other cars. He had an extra Toyota Atios. So I was driving that in the meantime. So I eventually went back for the Polo. We decided to drive to one of the nearest Kasi mechanics we could find. On the road, people were even honking, saying, yo, your wheels are coming off. We'd be like, we know, we know. Driving at like five kilometers an hour. We first go to this other mechanic. He's like, yo, this car, it's really bad. Leave it with me for the whole afternoon. Come back in the evening and it will be fixed. We decided, ah, no, this one is going to scam us. We'll come back, you tell us he wants like 5,000. We went to this other place and they checked the car, they removed the wheels and guess what they found? That. That is a spacer. Basically, um, from how they explained it, if you have mags on your car, you put those things to make them fit or something. So the previous owner, when he sold the car, he removed his mags but he left the spacers there. So when he put back the standard wheels, it meant they didn't have the proper space to sit properly. So as we drove the car after buying it, it slowly started to wiggle, become loose until it became visible. So that's the story. Those guys who checked the car for us, they only charged us 300 rand, 150 per wheel. And finally, I could take my first car home. Already I was like, hmm, yeah, I made a mistake. So I thought I, the issues are sorted, the issues are done, I can move on with my life. I was wrong. I was very wrong. These days, we buy cars now has Decra reports, so you can clearly see all the issues a car has before you buy it. I am so glad they added that. But at the time I bought it, there was nothing like that. So after I bought the car, I still had to go take it for like a road test, do the license disc and all that stuff. So when I took it to Decra, for, uh, for them to check it out i was sure it would pass i don't know why i thought that you see all those orange things those are all the things that were wrong with the car well some of them anyway the petrol filter was secured with wires the cv boot clamps were missing the other cv boot was leaking the battery and radiator were loose the power steering was too hard the steering wheel was skew and so on and so on and so on so i paid 500 and something rand and it failed and Decra was spot on to make this car fail because on that same day 17 days after i bought this car i'm on the highway driving at 90 if you're wondering why i was driving at 90 is because if you ever went past 90 the steering wheel would just start vibrating the whole car would just shake anyway something broke i had a bolt breaking like it just fell off and i saw it in my rearview mirror shining but i couldn't stop when I slowed down, the engine made this loud sound like bah, bah. So I didn't know what it was. So I, when I got home, I called some local mechanics. 
uh, that I had found on Google. They're like, nah, it's probably the gearbox. You'll need around 12,000 Rand or so. So at that point, I gave up. I found my rear via card. I went back to using public transport and I just left the car there. One day I remembered, oh, I'm actually an aircraft mechanic. So I decided to have a look at the engine. So I checked the mountings on top. They were still there. When I looked underneath the car, the third mounting that sits underneath was completely gone. It's the one that had broke off. It's just the bolt and the nut. So when I saw it, I was like, wow, what a wow. Someone would have charged me 12,000 rand for this. So I would move the engine around just to see if it's really the mounting. And it was, as you can see. So when I saw this, I was happy. I was like, ah, this can be fixed. So I called Cheddar Boy. I told Cheddar Boy, hey, Cheddar Boy, I just need like a bolt for one of the, the mountings of the car. Cheddar Boy knew a lot of random mechanics. So he directed me to this one guy. I called him and he came with his bolt, his nut, his torque wrench, and he tightened it for me. And he only asked for 120 rand. So as you can see, that engine, when you start the car or when you rev it or when you move, the engine would just swing. And good thing I parked it because had I kept driving it like that, the other mountings would have broken off as well. The whole engine would have come down. By the way, shout out to PA. She's the one who started the car for me while I was checking the engine. But yeah, after that was fixed, I was back to driving my Polo again, but the trust was broken at this point. Every time I would drive this car, I was just thinking, hey, will I get to where I'm going? Or is it just going to break down as usual? So because I was actually still new, at this point, I never knew you could go to a fuel station and say, I want a full tank. I used to think you had to calculate for them and guess, oh, I need 500 or 700 or whatever. And because this car had a broken fuel gauge, it will jump from full tank to half tank to empty back to quarter so i used to just put 100 rand 150 rand 100 rand 150 rand just so i have an idea that there's something left in there and because it had no radio i used to use my bluetooth speaker for music oh and after i got the car i got a samsung a50 huh huh i was leveling up and then the lights on this car you know these blue lights they looked very bright they would blind other drivers they would complain but as the driver, you don't see anything. They were terrible, the absolute worst. And one more thing that made me want to sell this car was that whenever it rained, somehow you'd feel water on your face. Where it entered, I don't know. But somewhere there was a leak. I just don't know where it was. You just hear, Ta. you're like, Hebana. The first time I drove in proper rain, I actually took this video. I was just tired. Just had my first drive in the rain. Yo, yeah. That's right. And I still want to sell the car. Yeah. So I decided I'm selling this car. So at we buy cars, I don't know now, but at the time you buy a car food stoots. You buy it, even if you have issues, you can't complain and say I'm taking it back. So I decided to. So I am selling my first car back to we buy cars, waiting for an evaluation. Yeah. And I'm gonna use that money to buy a better and proper car. And there she is. My beloved first car. I included that so you see how tired I was. Anyway, believe it or not, we buy cars refused to buy back their own car. They said, why are you bring it back to us? They didn't want it at any price. And at that point, I'd already fixed most of the issues. So I was stuck with it. After seven weeks with the VW Polo, it's not even two months. I just wanted it gone. But they were not going to take it back, so I decided I'll just keep it. At that point, I had already applied for the Ford Fiesta anyway. I just wanted to sell the Polo, so I have a deposit for the Fiesta, which I was supposed to collect the next day. As I was leaving with bikers, a colleague of mine called me and said, Hey, do you still have that Polo? I was like, yeah, I just tried to sell it to a bikers now. They don't want it. He's like, no, it's fine. Bring it to me. I'll buy it today, pay for it same time and I'll take it off your hands. So we met at Senten, he took the car, I gave him the documents and he sent me the money, 52,000 Rand. I took that money the next day, put it into Absa's account 
and you know the story of the Ford Fiesta. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link in the description. And I was finally free from Janos. Funny story, the next day he had already fixed the boot, he fixed the door, and he had put in a sound system on the Polo. He drove it for the next three years until he sold it about two weeks ago. The mileage was at over 250,000 kilometers, so the car was good. I was just tired of it. He says he sold it for 42,000 rand, so it's not really much of a loss considering he had it for three years. The only thing he didn't do in that three years, he never changed the ownership. So every time I had to renew my license disc, I had to call him like, hey, brah, then you'd send me money, then I renew for both of us. So guys, when you sell a car, make sure you change the ownership right there and there so you don't have issues later. I see this video is getting too long. In conclusion, when you're going to an auction, go with someone who knows cars well someone who can look at the car and tell you mm, here it's going to cost us a lot of money or here we found a bargain there are people i work with who bought their cars at auctions who bought their cars that we buy cars they've never had any issues they've never had any problems they just bought it and drove it and then there are cases like mine where you buy a car and maybe you need to jack it remove some spaces you need to check the mounting bolts and after that the car is fine so cases differ but always remember cheap things are expensive so if you buy a car for 35,000 or 40,000 rand you should at least expect to replace some things on it that's all i'm saying so keep an open mind i'm actually looking for a car myself right now i might be going to buy cars again i'm a bit older a bit wiser now so i should be able to find something decent for myself or maybe i'll just take the safe route and finance a car from a dealership and if you didn't know you've been watching the 14,000 subscriber special thank you so much for watching guys i really appreciate it if you haven't liked please like if you haven't subscribed please subscribe support local youtube guys it's the right thing to do make sure you share this video with your friends and family just to give them an eye opener while they're looking for their cars Anyway, until the next one, take care.